today we got top five thrash metal gems or forgotten underground thrash metal gems. Once again, some of you might know this, some of you might not know these. Uh, fucking, if you don't like it, whatever, don't watch it. All right, today we're gonna start with one of my all-time favorites, X Hoarder. So X Hoarder is recently making a huge comeback. They originally were getting back together in like 2011, I think, and they played like Maryland Death Fest. Little did I know that was gonna be their last show for a long time. They had like new T-shirts out and everything. Everyone thought they were putting out a new album, and they said they were gonna, but then some shit went down, and uh, yeah. But they're back with a vengeance now, and X Hoarder is a very near and dear band to my fucking heart, that's for sure. Um, a lot of you people know them as the band that Pantera ripped off of. I guess there is some similarities for sure, especially in the vocals. Um, so, first album, we've got Slaughter in the Vatican. Fucking dope as fuck. Um, this is like one of the heaviest, craziest thrash albums ever released, ever. Like, I don't know how anyone could argue with that. And then they also had The Law. They only had two albums. So, I actually really like this album. A lot of people, well, not a lot of people, but I've heard other people don't like this album. Uh, I think it's great. A lot of people don't like the guitar tone. But I like it a lot. So... Yeah, so back to Slaughter in the Vatican. Slaughter in the Vatican is like one of the most classic albums ever. Fucking, like the album cover is just crazy. Like, look at that shit. Like, guy's just getting fucked in his ass with like daggers and shit. And, like, and they're dragging the Popo to be hung at the Vatican Church. Pretty crazy. So like, standout tracks on this. This is like one of my favorite albums ever. Death in Vain, about being buried alive. <laughs> Homicide, you know, murdering. Desecrator, probably like some of the best lyrics of all time. Legions of Death, that song that got me an X Hoarder. <laughs> And Anal Lust, I think like one of the first bands talking about that kind of shit, like probably goes back to the Get Rude demo even. Yeah, it was on Get Rude demo fucking 80, 86, man. It's fucking crazy. These guys are on 86 talking about Anal Lust. Holy fuck. Yeah, this album's fucking deadly back to front. Definitely check it out if you don't know X-Hoarder, you're doing yourself a disservice. The Law, also fucking amazing. I actually don't mind the guitar tone, it's really like overdriven and crazy. Uh, I Am The Cross, one of the best songs. Unborn Again has some crazy fucking slap bass going on. It's got a really awesome cover of Into The Void. I think it's one of the only covers that's actually better than the original, which is kind of surprising. The Truth and the Law is probably my favorite two-parter song. And Incontinence is probably one of my favorite just instrumentals of all time. But yeah, these two albums together, fucking awesome. Highly recommend X Horde. If you don't know this shit, you just fucking kill yourself immediately, as Randy would say, right, bud? That guy loves X Horde too. You probably get in an argument about something I said there. Anyways, next, moving on, we got. So this is the thrash band that changed it all for me. Forbidden. I heard this back in high school when I thought I knew what thrash was, and I heard Forbidden Evil, and I really don't know if there's ever been like any pure thrash like I really like the high vocals in this it could turn off a lot of people but just right off the bat Chalice of Blood like Chalice of Blood so good I can listen to this over and over and over if I ever had to show someone what thrash was and they didn't know yet I would definitely show them through Eyes of Glass <laughs> Fast as fuck, crazy solos. Oh, 
Forbidden Evil. There's the choruses on this. There's just no ending. Lots of pretty crazy uh, people on this. So Paul Bostaff obviously cut his teeth on this stuff. Little known fact, Rob Flynn also had a hand in the creation of this band. Back when they were called just Forbidden Evil, before they were called Forbidden, like he was writing some of the best thrash ever in 85. And Rob Flynn is like one of the biggest whiny little baby fucking machine heads, like the worst band ever. And he began Forbidden and then went to violence. So how the fuck did that happen? I don't know. Let's ask Metal Sucks. Let's ask fucking... Corey Taylor or whatever. Yeah, his opinion matters on everything. So anyways, back to Forbidden. Forbidden Evil, awesome. And then going on to uh, Twisted Into Form. Uh, it's kind of, it's almost hard for me to pick which one of these I like better. I think I like Forbidden Evil more just because it's got more hits for me and just has that nostalgic feeling, but Twisted Into Form is also very, very, very close. Parting of the Ways, awesome. Why is it infinite? Evil. Fucking step by step, awesome. Twist, twist and do fall. Like I love all these choruses. It's like almost like a mi it's almost like power metal vocals over this shit. Fucking Russ Anderson. Bring you the through eyes of death. monster back in the day they have this one ep raw evil live at the dynamo and they have a cover of victim of changes that's so fucking funny we all go through no matter where we are Change up! Change up! Change up! Change up! Change up! Change up! no <laughs> we just put that on over and over and laugh but yeah, uh, I don't really think they did any, like, Distortion and Green are just, like, throw away crap, whatever Thrash Band did, copied Pantera in the early 90s. Omega Wave was pretty cool, has some really gay stuff on it, but there's some cool gems on it. I honestly don't remember it that good, I should probably listen to it again, but honestly, if you're going to choose one, check out Forbidden Evil. Alright, next up, we have another band, very near and dear to my heart, if you notice a lot of this Thrash is. In fact, I have... Two atrophy tapes here. So this is the first album, Soul Size Hate, and then Found by Nature. One of the worst album covers I've ever seen in my life. A little fucking kid. So uh, we used to go to Arcade Records, which was a record store in Medicine Hat, me and my buddy Murph saw dude. And after school, we would just fucking spend hours in there and just buy anything that looked like thrash. And I found uh, I found this one first, and then I ordered this Socialized Hate off eBay. And like this picture right here, I got that tattooed on myself. I had to change the had to change the head though because apparently that's too close to an H A symbol. And uh, if you're not H A and they find out you have something close to that, they will chop it off. And I would like to keep my skin, so we changed it to uh, Ace of Spades, and now I look like a douchebag. So what are you gonna do? Anyways. On to Atrophy. These two fucking albums are like killer. Uh, Socialized Hate as the classic hit, which everyone knows, Beer Bong. Rest in Pieces was always my favorite. Urban Decay is really good, the B side. Yeah, just back to front, really good. Honestly, I probably like. Uh, Violent by Nature a bit more, even though the album cover is super weak. Uh, Puppies and Friends, is fucking, like these guys kind of shot themselves in the foot with that shit. Like, all right, In Their Eyes, awesome. Too Late to Change. Slip through the cracks about like not liking going to school. Just a really fucking awesome thrash band, wicked solos. A lot of people might not like the monotone vocal delivery, but 
I fucking love this band and these two albums. So yeah, check it out. Uh, they're playing. Uh, they're actually just back together and they're fucking ripping it. They're gonna be playing with my buddy's band, Terrifier. Saw Renee. Uh, yeah, gonna be fucking awesome playing with it, like Hellstar and I think like Nasty Savage and some other crazy shit. All right, next up we got another one of my favorite bands, Coroner. Okay, so Coroner. This might be like this close contender for my favorite thrash ever. You see the Punishment for Decadence shirt we got here. So the first album, R.I.P., really good. Um, honestly, I probably know this album the least. It's pretty sweet. I got into Coroner through Mental Vortex, which is pretty pretty cool. Uh, I don't like that album as much. It's not as thrash. It's more like progressive and like technical. Every song on this album has like the best intro ever, and then it kind of travels off. So for me, it's all about punishment for decadence and no more color. Uh, I can't pick between those two. Uh, no more color, maybe by just a little bit, but Punishment for Decadence has those crazy like speed metal riffs. Uh, yeah, R.I.P. is awesome, but I don't think it's as good as the next two. So many fucking hits off Punishment for Decadence. Fucking Mass Jackal, so classic. <laughs> Skeleton on your shoulder, sudden fall, like some of my favorite riffing ever. Voyage to Eternity. Purple Haze is like one of the worst covers ever. Excuse me, you wanna kiss the sky. Purple Haze inside my mind. <laughs> um yeah, no more color. Just as good, if not better. Die by my hand. Read my scars. It's fucking awesome. Tunnel of pain. Last entertainment's pretty weird. Now we can go. Now there it is. More progressive as they go, Mental Vortex gets more progressive. Honestly, I don't really know Grin as much. I should probably really get to know that one of these days. So I don't look like a jackass on this shit, but yeah. So this is like album, like, I don't know. I try not to do like every album they have, but definitely check out Punishment for Decadence and No More Color if you want a place to start. R.I.P. is really good too. Fun fact behind these guys. So originally on their demos and stuff, they had Tom Warrior on vocals from Celtic Frost. They were Celtic Frost roadies, and apparently they took a bunch of gear from a bunch of bands. Um, I don't know if they took it from Coroner as well, but they took a bunch of gear from a bunch of bands, kind of fucked a bunch of people over to get their start. So they kind of had a bad rep going in, but you know they're still one of the best thrash bands ever, so. What are you gonna do when you're young and dumb, I guess, right? Definitely check out Coroner, some of like the best, like most Technical. I was. This is like one of the only like actually like technical thrash metal bands. I would say like fuck. This shit's so fucking awesome. Crazy ripping solos. Best three piece of all time. Swiss doesn't get much better. The only band on this list that is not American. All right. Next up, we got. I wouldn't say they're little known, but I never hear anyone bring them up or talk about them, and it's a fucking travesty. Hyrax. All right, so we're going to start off with, look how classic these guys are. Here's a picture of Caton Dapina with James Hetfield when they're, like, young as fuck, just hanging out. So, uh, Raging Violence, fucking awesome album. It's almost like a like a crossover, almost like grind parts on this. Like, that album cover, like, what is that? I've always, like, thought it's, like, a fucking 12 case of eggs, and one of the eggs is, like, being, like, fucked by something. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's, like, some dude's head or some shit. It's a pretty trippy album cover. Uh, my favorite on these last two is Destroy and Bloodbath. Destroy pretty much has like a fucking, uh, like a blast almost, like a pre-blast. And Bloodbath is just like fast as fuck. It's 
almost like speed metal at times, almost. My favorite album though is Hate, Fear, and Power. A much more uh, down-to-earth album cover, if you want to say. Uh, Lightning Thunder, fucking amazing. Lightning Thunder. A lot of people will get turned off by the vocals in this for sure. Almost like a violence kind of effect, but I like them a lot. Uh, the Last War, fucking awesome. Both these albums, killer. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Check them out. They are also American. Some of the best thrash is from America for me and death metal, but also can't neglect Germany. Um, honestly, uh, yeah, these guys had like two albums until like 04, and they did the New Age of Terror, which is actually fucking really sweet. I haven't heard uh, El Rasto de la Muerte very much, so I can't chime in on that. But their newer album was also pretty cool for newer thrash. So there you go. There's five thrash bands to check out. Give them a listen. Give them a check. And hopefully you will find something of enjoyment. And if not, please drown yourself in a river. Thank you. Bye.